All right, so we're going to talk about the Ran Thanagar War. What is the Ran Thanagar War? Now, first off, this isn't part of the uh, the uh, comic haul that Chris sent me. This is one I got. Um, I recently discovered thrift books, and that's not good for my wallet. Even though a lot of the books are not in great condition, um, it's better than nothing. And Ran the Ran Thanagar War has been a comic I've been wanting to read for a long time because it always sounded like a cool story for. Uh, um, that was right up my interest. It was it had lesser characters. Um, it was dealing with a big cosmic conflict. But the one thing that kind of kept me away from it for so long because I always thought it was like a direct tie-in to Infinite Crisis, and it turns out it's just kind of leading in. And in fact, it has very little to do with Infinite Crisis on a whole. Like if anything, it's just like the book ends where inf and Infinite Crisis begins. So it really has nothing to do with Infinite Crisis at all, really, when you think about it. So, the, um, the Ranthanagar War hasn't really been adapted, it has been talked about a lot, but let's actually talk about it. So what is the Ranthanagar War? There's actually, I found out there's actually some, uh, some lead up to it in a, in a, in a uh, Adam Strange miniseries. Basically what happened is that, um, Adam discovered that, uh, Adam Strange just thought Ron was destroyed, it turns out it just got moved to another dimension. And he met this um, this death cult of Thanagarians, who he managed to stop. But in the last moment, the, their leader Valkyr uh, transported uh, Thanagar right to Ron, like right in Ron's orbit, and killed everyone, that making Ron, the Ronians think that it was a Thanagar attack on them. So now, Ran and Thanagar are now orbiting each other, and war has been declared. And essentially, the galaxy is taking sides. Like the do the Dominators, Blackfire, and the Tamaranians, they're taking sides. Um, the Kaluans are taking sides. So Everyone is basically like jumping on the bandwagon, and this could be a big interstellar war. So uh, Adam Strange, Hawkman, and Hawkgirl, um, Kyle Rayner, and Captain Comet, and other cosmic heroes have to basically team up in order to stop this big cosmic, um, uh, these big cosmic shenanigans. I really like this comic, I really do. There's a lot going on here that I haven't discussed, like a death cult bringing out a Thanagarian soul-eating god, and all I could think was Slanesh. Like, it literally feels like this villain called Aminar Sin, um, uh, yeah, Aminar Sin, who is this Thanagarian death god who consumes souls, and, he, and, like, how he was brought about, I was like, my Warhammer brain just made me go, so he's literally just Slanesh. That's, 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 the, that's the best way to describe it. Um, the comic is written by Dave Gibbons, uh, artist and co-creator of Watchmen, with artwork by Ivan Reyes. And I gotta say, that's a great duo. Like, if you want big, bombastic, uh, like, cosmic uh, storyline... Yeah, look no further than Ivan Reyes uh, doing these beautiful colors and whatnot, and Dave Gibbons writing this. I also like the color uh, cover by Brian Bollard. It's really cool. Now, uh, like I said, this really focuses on other characters outside of like your normal uh, DCU. Like again, like we have, um, like it's about it, we have Kyle Rayner, one of the best Green Lanterns. Um, we have Adam Strange and Hawkman, at, at Hawkman and Hawkgirl as our main focus. We also have like another lesser-known cosmic character, um, Captain Comet. We have Vildrox. We have a lot. We have a lot of cosmic characters, and that's what always inter like surprised me about DC Comics is that they never really utilize a lot of their cosmic characters. They never really do like Guardians of the Gal. They have like the Omega Men, which are DC's Guardians of the Galaxy, but they don't play any role here except for one character named Tigor. So. It really doesn't like that's what bothers me is that DC has all these great cosmic characters, but there never there was never like this is the closest you will get to Annihilation for DC Comics. Um, whereas Marvel for a long for a hot minute for a real hot minute dominated the corner in ter like with Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning with uh, their cosmic space operas, but I'm surprised DC never did anything major cosmic. Um, it's always weird because Marvel and DC like have. Uh, elements that they utilize better. DC utilizes their villains better and do villain story arcs better. Marvel does cosmic stuff better. DC does supernatural stuff better. 
it's weird. Like there's str- like no like there's a, like there's a difference between the two in the comics, and I'm not talking like live action or animated. I'm talking. I'm speaking directly about the comics specifically. It's like they can't like neither uh, like one has the edge in terms of like universe in universe storytelling than the other. Like I said, Marvel did more cosmic stuff than this. Although there is a sequel called Ran Thanagar: The Holy War, written by Jim Starlin, who is a master of cosmic stuff, obviously the creator of Thanos. But I haven't read that yet. I would like to read Ran Thanagar: The Holy War because it's basically like making a new Guardians group and it has Bizarro teaming up with everybody. That sounds fun. Yeah, it also. If you're wondering, um, this also has the whole thing with Hawkman and Hawkgirl, where Hawkgirl, Shaira, was a different character than the Hawkgirl we have here, and they basically recently merged the two into one. Don't worry about it, don't think about it. Um, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of great uh, storytelling in here, and there, it tells a lot. Like, again, we have the Ranthanagar War, we have Kyle trying to get the Green Lanterns invested in the war. We have uh, Aminar Sin and his death cult. We have, um, and at the heart of it, it's just everyone fighting each, uh, like fighting in this big cosmic war that's growing bigger and bigger and bigger. It's a lot of fun, and it's actually very well paced. I really enjoy this. I like the like again. I'm surprised. I'm shocked. I never got this sooner because I should have gotten this sooner. The only thing, it, like the only thing that ties it to Infinite Crisis, is this big infi- it, like this big interdimensional portal, and that's it at the end. Um, all in all, if you can find this book, I'd say give it a, sh- I'd say give it a look. Um, it's about thirteen dollars, um, but I imagine it, that was the original price. But I imagine it's probably gotten lower since then. It's probably dropped since then. It's just good to see D- l- other DC characters outside of the big three sometimes. And I've always been a fan of like Adam Strange, so uh, I've always lo- I always like he's I wouldn't call him like one of my top ten favorite characters, but I would call him a character I would I want to see more adventures of. But anyway, so there you go, guys. That's my review of the Round Thanagar War. Uh, you guys tell me in the comments below what did you guys think of it. Comment below, let me know. Other than that, hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse.